Hey everyone, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. Today, we're going to be taking you through the acromioclavicular joint. If you like learning anatomy from us, please be sure to smash that like button. And otherwise, let's dive in with today's video. So the acromioclavicular joint, commonly abbreviated as the ACJ, this is the articulation between the acromion of the scapula that we can see as this hooked-like structure on the most lateral side and the articulation with the acromion is from the distal or lateral aspect of the clavicle. So the ACJ is a plain synovial joint, meaning that these two surfaces effectively slide and glide across one another during movement. The key most important features of the ACJ is to spin posteriorly, and superiorly when we're moving the arm. So when I want to elevate my arm, if I don't move my ACJ, it gets stuck. So as a result, the ACJ of the clavicle and the scapula has to spin backwards to give space for my humerus to be able to come through when I want to lift my arm. So no surprise that it commonly gets irritated in those higher degrees of movement of the shoulder because that's where it has to perform its most important roles. It also provides a barrier to stop the humerus from dislocating too far superiorly. And whilst this isn't a pattern of instability that we see commonly at the glenohumeral joint, at least we know that we have this barrier over the top to stop excessive movement of the humerus. So next, let's talk about some of the ligaments involved at the ACJ. And the first one to point out is this one, the coracoacromial ligament, because contrary to popular belief, it isn't as important to providing stability of the ACJ. So the main role of the coracoacromial ligament, whilst it joins from the coracoid process to the acromion, its actual main role is to stop the humerus from translating or dislocating too far superiorly. Why doesn't it have such a role in stabilizing the ACJ? Well, it's because it attaches from the scapula to the scapula. The coracoid process is a part of the scapula and the acromion is a part of the scapula. So whether or not the clavicle moves, this ligament has no impact on that. So do be aware that the coracoacromial ligament isn't actually that important in the stability of the ACJ. So instead, if we look at the ACJ, let's start with the joint capsule. So like all joint capsules, this is a great big synovial protector and it wraps all around the joint and it holds in the synovial fluid so that we have good and fluid movement of the distal clavicle against the acromion. And then there are a couple of really important thickenings to the capsule. These are the acromioclavicular ligaments. You can see here we have the superior acromioclavicular ligament and we have the inferior acromioclavicular ligament. So you can see that these attach directly from the acromion to the clavicle, both on the superior side and on the inferior side. And therefore, when these two surfaces move side to side or even a little bit up and down, these two ligaments are going to try and provide that stability, keeping them close together. As we said, these are more thought of as thickenings of the capsule, so they're very tightly bound to the capsule itself. We then have two additional ligaments, which are probably the most important when it comes to the ACJ. These are the conoid ligament and the trapezoid ligament. So you can see that these two ligaments attach from the coracoid process of the scapula to the clavicle. And therefore, that's why they are commonly referred to as the coracoclavicular ligament or the coracoclavicular ligaments, because again, they go from the coracoid process to the clavicle. So when your patient has a trauma involving the ACJ, these two ligaments aim to hold the clavicle against the scapula, or actually in some textbooks it will say that they aim to hold the scapula up towards the clavicle. So you can imagine that when your patient does have a major trauma involving the ACJ, if these get torn, it will lead to an ACJ separation or an ACJ dislocation. A natural sign of this might be a step 
deformity where you see a little bit of a step in the patient's shoulder because the clavicle has lifted upwards relative to the acromion, you get that step in the bony structures as a result, which will naturally be a way in which you can spot signs of an ACJ. Sometimes if your patient has one of these separations and it's not causing any symptoms and it's not causing any major instability, surgeons may not actually repair these ligaments. They may just leave the patient to have this step deformity. However, if it is causing major issues with pain and major instability, then they may need to repair these surgically to make sure that there's enough stability at the joint. So talking about ACJ separations, this is the Rockwood classification. And as you can see, it aims to try and explain the different type of injuries that you can get at the acromioclavicular joint. I'll take you through the key highlights. There's six different injuries that you can have, type one, type two, type three, type four, type five, and type six. Some of the most common ones that we'll see are these type two and type three injuries where there is a trauma involving the ACJ, which leads to a disruption of the acromioclavicular ligaments and possibly the coracoclavicular ligaments, which therefore leads to that separation between the clavicle and the acromion. And this is where you may well see a mild step deformity or a greater step deformity with those type three injuries. A lot of the time, these patients actually manage fairly well without needing any major intervention through surgery and they still maintain a lot of function around the shoulder. Your type 4, type 5 and type 6 injuries are much greater injuries and you can see that with the pathology section for these different classifications it involves greater levels of disruption whether it be posterior displacement of the clavicle into the trapezius muscle whether it be rupturing of the deltotrapezial fascia because of course the deltoid muscle and the trapezius muscle have attachments with the clavicle and the acromion and your type 6 major dislocation we don't see this that often where we have inferior displacement of the clavicle underneath the ACJ. So ultimately these 4, 5, 6 type injuries often will unfortunately need to go through more major intervention in terms of surgery. So just to finish off and summarize with some clinical points that we see in practice, the area that patients experience pain when they have ACJ pathology is right on the ACJ itself. They won't commonly report pain here or down the arm. They'll come in and say that their pain is right on the top of their shoulder where their ACJ is. So do look out for that natural sign. We said earlier that the biggest role of the ACJ is to spin superiorly and posteriorly so that when we're lifting the arm up, it clears backwards to give space for the arm to move upwards into those higher degrees of movement. What that means is that it's natural that when patients have an irritated ACJ, it's those higher ranges of shoulder movement that they're likely to get their symptoms because those are the ranges of movement that the ACJ really has to do its job. We may well see ACJ osteoarthritis in our patients because the ACJ is one of, if not the most common area to experience osteoarthritis in the body. So don't be surprised if patients have signs on x-ray that show ACJ pathology, even though they may not have a huge amount of pain there. And once again, the natural signs you'll see if your patient has had an ACJ separation will be that step deformity. So look out for that in your practice after your patient has had a trauma. So everyone, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please support us by smashing that like button. It's the number one thing you can do to help us on the channel. If you want more from us, be sure to check out our resources on social media. We have our Instagram account, at Clinical Physio. Make sure to give us a follow there. And we're also on TikTok, at Clinical.Physio, if you use TikTok more commonly. Now, if you want more on anatomy, we have the Shoulder Anatomy Bootcamp on our membership channel, member.clinicalphysio.com. Link is in the description below. And if you want even more anatomy teaching, we've got the Hip Anatomy Bootcamp, the Knee Anatomy Bootcamp, the Elbow Anatomy Bootcamp, the Wrist and Hand Anatomy Bootcamp. We've got them all. So do join us there if you want more anatomy teaching. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Great to have you with us. Look forward to seeing you soon here on Clinical Physio.